even though it's a very different year, we are incredibly excited to be here to take some time uh, to talk through some of the innovation that's happening within PCCA and, of course, to launch our new product for 2020. Because we are virtual, it actually gives us the opportunity to take a walk. You'll get a chance to see some of our laboratories and to see and meet the people behind all the great products that we produce here at PCCA. With that in mind, let's take a walk. As pharmacists, we know that the physical chemical stability and microbiologic integrity of the compounded preparations that we make every day for patients are of heightened concern in today's marketplace, not just by us as professionals, but by regulatory agencies as well. And the why behind this is quite simple. We need to know that the compounds that we make every day remain stable throughout the course of the BUD. And with aqueous preparations, there is a heightened risk of hydrolytic type reactions. And there's enough water present to support the growth of microbial organisms if not adequately preserved. With anhydrous preparations, you don't have that same risk, which is why there are longer default BUDs in the USP chapters with regard to low water activity or anhydrous preparations. So all told, what this means is that there's a greater demand for anhydrous solutions for use in compounding in our marketplace. So we went to work and our mission was to develop more anhydrous options for use in your practices. Now with that comes some unique technical challenges. With anhydrous systems, it's very important to be able to assess the release of the actives out of those systems. The other thing is, does the system have the functional attributes that are important for its use? For example, if it's a topical, how does it feel? Does it have the right cosmetic feel to be able to give appropriate compliance for patients? And in order to overcome those technical challenges, you have to have a great team of scientists looking at it from a a drug release aspect, and also just how does it impact cells. And we have two great scientists here, Dr. Gwen Song, who does a lot of our cellular-based research, and Dr. Yi Lu, who is vitally important with regard to protocol generation, and also how do we assess all the technical data that's coming out of these studies. So with that in mind, we, as you know, developed W06, and this is a topical anhydrous system for superficial use, great cosmetic feel. We followed that with Permeate, which is a topical penetration enhancing anhydrous system. And we had to assess whether or not the Permeate had the ability to increase the penetration of various actives into and through human skin. We did that via Franz diffusion cell studies conducted by Dr. Song. And then we know that actives have specific chemical structures and the structure has a big role, not only in its pharmacologic action in the body, but also has a role in how it is uh, behaves within a, a, a dosage form or a formulation. And that led us to develop a very specific base for the delivery of topical hormones, and that is VersaBase anhydrous HRT. And again, we assess the ability of that base to deliver various hormones into and through human skin in vitro. But we weren't done just yet. So even though we continue to increase the number of anhydrous delivery systems, we are also increasing the size of our Formula Plus library. And many of these formulations are aqueous-based formulations that continue to be very, very important for the care of patients. Now that work is being done by an incredibly talented team of analytical chemists. We have Candice Ip, we've got Ashley Shan, and Vincent Bowie. In addition to the analytical work that we're doing, we're also doing USP51 antimicrobial effectiveness testing on all aqueous-based preserved formulations. And this is critically important to make sure that the preservative systems in those formulas are remaining viable throughout the entire BUD. Now, all of the analytical work being done on these BUD studies is done using ultra-high performance liquid chromatography, or UHPLCs. 
And the methods used in those studies are stability indicating, meaning the preparations are forcibly degraded to make sure that the principal peak of interest, the main API, is sufficiently separated from any degradant byproduct. The other thing that we're doing is we are doing these studies on anhydrous preparations as well. Even though you have longer default dates with USP, we still want to make sure that the, the actives are stable throughout that time frame, and you're able to extend the BUD up to six months because the proposed chapter only allows for 90 days and with data you can extend to 180 days. So with all of this, in conjunction with data generated by the outside laboratory, Eagle Analytical, we're broadening the depth and breadth of that Formula Plus library. We knew we needed to address other routes of administration when developing low water activity delivery systems. Now, as I just stated, there are a lot of technical challenges in developing, formulating, and producing those types of systems. We went back to the lab, we worked very closely with our production teams here at PCCA, and fortunately, we have great equipment here that allows us to easily scale those systems up, and we have intimate control over the conditions under which these bases are manufactured. And we have great capacity. So our R&D team has been hard at work all year, spending many hours on the bench in order to develop this new product. Daniel Banoff, whom many of you have already met, will be speaking with you guys tomorrow on a lot of the technical and more intimate details of the base. I did want to take an opportunity, though, to introduce you to a couple of our R&D team members who, like I said, have been working really, really diligently on the development of this new base. We have Christine Vu, and then we have Connie Hui, and then, of course, Daniel Banoff, who will be speaking with you tomorrow. We also have Dr. Maria Carvalho and Fabiana Banoff, who have been very critical in working with case studies and developing technical data sheets and a lot of the write-ups around our products. All of this work has been focused in on developing a new anhydrous delivery system with the correct functional attributes and drug release characteristics for vaginal use. Today, I am really, really proud and excited to introduce to you our new product, Elage Anhydrous Vaginal Base. So what is Elage? Well, one, it's anhydrous, and we've already spoken at length about the importance and need in the marketplace for an anhydrous delivery system, and some of the challenges associated with anhydrous delivery. Well, one of the important attributes of Elage is that it is self-emulsifying. And why is that important? If you have an anhydrous, water-free system, once it encounters the aqueous environment of the vaginal tissue, it has to be miscible in order to release its payload, to release the drugs in an acceptable manner. The other important attribute is that it's mucoadhesive, and this does a couple things. One, it increases the contact time of the base on the vaginal tissue, and importantly for the users of the product, it reduces leakage. One of the other critical attributes of Elage are the ingredients used to make it. All of the ingredients in Elage are pharmaceutical grade and are contained within other approved products in the marketplace. That was very important. Another very important um, attribute is safety. And we spent a lot of time thinking about safety when we designed the product and when we tested the product. Daniel will be speaking about this in detail tomorrow, but Elage is safe to be used as a vaginal delivery system. One of the other important parameters around a vaginal delivery system is drug release, especially with an anhydrous system. So we, we focused a lot of attention on making sure that Elage will release the common actives used in vaginal preparations. Lastly, we, we knew that there was a lot of concern and know that there's a lot of concern around stability, even though it's an anhydrous base. So right now, we do have formulations that are being studied as part of our Formula Plus program to evaluate the stability of those actives in Elage over the course of 90 and 180 days. 
we also have developed around 40 formulations that are now in our formulation database ready for you to view and to just get a, get a feel for the different types of formulas that one could, could make with Elage. So we are really excited about this delivery system. We think it has great potential for you and your patients, and we look forward to hearing from you on what you think about the product.